This recording is about understanding CT dose displays. What I want to talk under this title is um, regarding CT dose measurements, CT dose descriptors, CT dose regarding pre-scan display and post-scan display. Finally, want to talk about CT radiation dose structure report. How is CT dose measurements? This has been discussed in other podcasts. However, here I'm giving a brief description of how the CT dose measurements are done. In reality, CT dose is not measured directly on patients. Physicists use standardized phantoms, such as displayed here, a 32 centimeter diameter lucite phantom assigned as a body, adult body, and a 16 centimeter uh, diameter phantom assigned as adult head. Physicists use this phantom to measure the output of the scanner. Um, from there, we can derive some type of a radiation dose measurement directly linked to the patient and so forth. So, the CT dose is measured using standardized phantom. Measurements are then used to estimate CT patient dose. As of now, the main CT dose descriptors are Computer Tomography Dose Index, CTDI Wall, expressed in milligray. And second one is Dose Length Product, also known as DLP, expressed in milligray centimeter. Few states in the United States currently require physicians to record CTDI Wall and DLP for each of their patients, especially after a series of incident of radiation burns on the CT perfusion studies it was regulated that the physicians record this information on each patient um, charts. So, the physician generally r record CTDA wall expressed in milligray and DLP expressed in milligray centimeter. So, the next part of the lecture is basically want to talk about understanding how this information is displayed. It is also required by regulation now, all the manufacturers who manufacture CTs do have a mechanism to display this information directly on screen before and after the patient scan is done. And that is the purpose of this particular short podcast talking about how to understand the dose display. So let me start with the pre-scan display. Shown here is a screenshot of a, of a Siemens CT scanner wherein when a technologist is inputting the CT protocol of various scan parameters, there is a information displayed on the screen. As shown here, the CTDA wall is displayed which is based on the parameters set on the particular scanner and a particular protocol. <laughs> the second part I want to draw attention is each of the manufacturers are also required to display the type of phantom it is based on. So the CTDA wall which is 8.6 milligray shown here is based on using a phantom size of 32 centimeters. Why is this important? Because that will tell us what type of phantom the values depends on. It also helps a physicist to verify the dose display on an annual basis and using the same phantom and measuring and seeing that how far the displays are with respect to the measurement. As you can see here, CTDI wall displayed here before the scan basically depends on the purely depends on the scan techniques. So, if somebody changes any of these techniques, the dose display should reflect the corresponding change. In a way, the next step is to tie up these values with respect to some reference numbers, reference value thereby it can alert the user if they set the technique too high and so forth. In fact, that is the subject of the next podcast, what is called a CT dose alert. Here is another um, manufacturer's uh, screen. As of now, there is no standard form of displaying this information. Therefore, each of the manufacturers has slight variation on the way they display this CTDI wall or DLP information pre-scan. Shown here is a Toshiba scanner which displays not only the CTDI wall, also gave, giving a rough estimate of the DLP. Again, DLP depends on the scan length 
and this is in a pre-scan it's basically an estimating for the select protocol based on the standard size also displayed here shown here is the phantom type these values depends on now once the scan is done um, we have post scan display pre-scan display for pediatric CT are shown here while doing a pediatric CT the, again the scanner displays the information however um, pediatric abdomen dose are often displayed based on a 32 centimeter phantom more relevant is to display the, the dose based on a 16 centimeter phantom and this varies among the manufacturers so for anybody trying to understand the dose display they had to watch out for the type of um, phantom used for a particular dose display and then correct it accordingly for the actual estimation of the patient dose. Why is this important? Especially for those facilities under, undergoing accreditation, when the physicist is measuring the dose for submission for accreditation, they may have to use the appropriate phantoms for their measurement to verify the dose display and that's important here. Now the the one caveat to the pre-scan display is when the protocol is done or, uh, when is done with the dose modulation when the dose modulation is turned on the ctda wall is not displayed as shown on the top panel so shown here is the siemens scanner where the care dose 4d that is the type the nomenclature for the dose modulation when it is turned on the the ctda wall it remains blank because the scanner has not decided on the parameter and the scanner is going to choose the scan parameters based on the patient setting therefore the pre-scan display remains empty here on the other end when you have turned the care dose off and set the technique manually as shown in the middle panel then immediately the scanner will display the CTDA wall corresponding to that particular technique and in the parenthesis also showing the type of phantom when the ctd dose modulation is turned on which is done majority of the case now at the end of the scan there is an average ctd wall is displayed post scan with reference numbers shown on this bottom panel here on the line 2 if you see the mas displayed is 201/150 basically it indicates to us that a dose modulation was used on this particular scan with a reference point of 150 mas however the average mas did resulted after the scan is about 201 and that's another way of understanding this dose display now coming to the post scan display the details on scan series and scan parameters are now available on the post scan display in fact the DLP is also displayed for effective dose estimation and this is important because we can use this information for estimating the patient risk and so forth shown on this particular slide on the bottom panel is a patient undergoing a cardiac study if we just say cardiac study one can assume it's only one once an exam done however this patient had a calcium scoring on the line item 2 and does coronary CT and geography done by having a more detailed post scan display it makes it a little bit more easier for assessing the patient dose and the risk and so forth even higher advanced than this one is the um, currently all the manufacturers also provide what is called as a, um, a radiation dose structured report and this is very key especially for software doing this dose tracking which tracks the information based on this available information here is an example of a structured dose report a radiation dose structured report which gives all the details of all the exposure done on a particular exam it not only displays the ctda wall and the dlp it also tells each series what's the average dlp what technique it was chosen and 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 the scan length everything so the radiation dose structured report is the is the um, ultimate uh, uh, report which houses all the details of the scan information which in a way can be extracted towards any dose tracking softwares 
to have variety of information for assessing the dose displaced and so forth. So finally to wrap it, the currently there is an option for a both pre-scan display and a post-scan display. From there, we can estimate what is called as an effective dose values. And that's an effective dose estimation is based on some type of an anthropomorphic phantom and some conversion factors in a Monte Carlo simulation and so forth. By using such way, using the DLP information from a typical dose report, one can estimate the effective dose values based on the conversion factors or the Monte Carlo simulation. Why is this important? These days, more and more attention being paid to what is called as diagnostic reference level. So, basically, this information helps a site to compare or to do an internal quality control assessment to ensure the patient safety. Plus, it also provides a way of comparing with respect to the regional and national level. Shown here is a set of diagnostic reference level recently published by the American College of Radiology dose index registry. They have displayed for a more 10 most uh, CT examinations giving both the DRL, the diagnostic reference level in the column along with the achievable dose values which basically means is DRL is pegged at the 75th percent third quartile of the, uh, the, uh, the value collected for a set of scans or a set of uh, uh, scans exams and achievable dose is what the facility can strive towards gaining towards these numbers without jeopardizing the image quality. Also shown in the diagnostic reference level is the size specific dose estimate which is another aspect which basically converts the CTDA wall for the pediatric and adult uh, abdomen or body protocols to a, to a based on the patient size. So in conclusion, radiation dose estimates for CT exams are best expressed as CTDA wall and DLP. CTDA wall is expressed in milligray and DLP is milligray centimeter. The caveat is you have to understand the CT dose index is not patient dose. Understanding these CT dose display is key to ensuring patient safety.